Only 18 seconds of logo. What will I do with all this extra time? Either this tank is a dick to flowers, or this is some heavy-handed symbolism. Why not both? These prototypes blow up three vehicles in the convoy before this tank even reacts, and then it misses them by a mile, even though their positions have been revealed by those awesome 80s laser beams. The robots take out two more vehicles, but the tank still doesn't do shit. Synchronized death beams. Come on, though. In a real battlefield scenario, these robots would have no stealth once they fired their death beams. A skilled enemy tank driver would find and make tinsel out of them. And no, your sandbag fort won't save you. Enemy neutralized, ladies and gentlemen. That's adorable. This is a really weak turnout. A military-grade BattleBots event could sell out arenas. These triangle-shaped tables. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet... Momentary feedback on a PA system cliché. Also, nice stock sound effect. Also, don't tap on the mic. Sound engineers hate that. Strategic artificially intelligent nuclear transport, or saint as we call it. What could possibly go wrong? I am so creeped out right now. Is somebody going to put out those raging fires back there? Flush eyes. I know these are just prototypes, but this seems wildly inefficient. Why not install a Robocop style in arm ice pick? Eyes. Gin. Tonic. Your tax dollars hard at work. Mm. Just the way I like it. Shaken, but not stirred. It was not shaken. One thing we can't control is the weather. The man upstairs is still in charge of that department. I think the man upstairs just wants to put out those still burning fires from that twisted wreckage over there. This umbrella boy. Everyone reaches for their ponchos and umbrellas except for this oblivious guy operating a video camera. It was just raining, but it's sunny in this shot. Still sunny. Well, he is saying to the crowd, they are making him dog sick, sir. This character was written with about 25 sins worth of that's racist. The last time I am seeing him, he is busy vomiting, sir. Make it 50. Removing a sin for Steve Gutenberg because he's always so damn likable. Now, what do they need me for? To tell him each robot costs 11 million dollars and it kills people? I get Crosby's internal conflict about being part of the war machine, but if you knowingly design nuclear battle droids for a living, you pretty much forfeit the right to complain about how wrong and dangerous they are. Coming through, please. Wine coolers. Area, Long Island iced tea. This fleet of fembots serving drinks and sandwiches is totally genius. I mean sexist. We can parachute these robot guys behind enemy lines. Then each one of these little boogers carries a 25 megaton bomb right up the middle of Main Street, Moscow. Cold War mongering. These two dumb fucks are staging the robots outside during an electrical storm because, well, the plot has to move forward somehow. Hey, Norman, you better get number five off that generator, man. Okay, okay, I'll get to it. Take your time, dude. What's the worst that could happen? Why is number five on a generator anyway? He's not shown needing power at any other point in the movie. Number five survives this. What the hell happened? I don't know. You just signaled the rise of Skynet, asshole. These beeping futuristic movie computers. Originally, I had non-military purposes in mind. I designed it as a marital aid. PG speak for fuckbot. You just know he has one of these at home, too. Dr. Crosby has designed a weapon that will keep our world safe for all time. Howard, what's so safe about blowing people up? Make love, not war, man. Coffee service coming through. Please watch your stick. Ooh. Movie proves that the power of robo-boners is a basic instinct. Nova Laboratory's waste disposal process consists of a guy in a rickety pickup collecting six or eight cans at a time without bothering to check or secure the back. Please serve yourself. Have a can of eight. Still sexist. I think we got it. What is that right there? Yeah, what's that right there? Right there. Zoom and enhance cliche. It doesn't get happy. It doesn't get sad. It doesn't laugh at your jokes. Joke shadowing. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? We've got corporate sponsorship, y'all. This shit happens in broad daylight. Discount the Goonies house. That's not how you spell parties. Darn it, you know, he looked kind of sick to me, so I thought I'd just take him down to the vet and fix him up a little bit. What is this? Quinn's medical research is slime bag! The dog is on its last leg! What in the actual fuck? How did this dog get on the roof? God damn it, don't ever call me that! You don't even know what I mean! Casual domestic violence in a PG-rated 80s film. Hey! Who 
told you you could take number one. I didn't know I need permission to piss. If we need protection from number five, this is the best weapon we could have. Movie inadvertently starts World War III. Crazy skunk lady. If this snack shack's a rockin', don't come a knockin'. These are animals. They're lower life forms. Lower life forms? Stephanie is a dick to her pets. Here, Oregon. Oregon. Home of the beaver, famous for cherries. Beavers, cherries. Don't forget hipsters. These guys have been driving all night, but it only took number five like a couple hours to reach Astoria. Oranges, apples, lemons, limes. Oh, that's, that's great. Thanks a lot. There's no way you're going to eat all of that fruit anyway. Look at that. See that? Input. Right, input. Stephanie discovers what American parents already know, that TV is the best robot sitter. And the film's producers discover an easy way to deliver six product placements in under three minutes. You're a robot? Yes. I thought you were alive, number five. I let you tear my house to shreds, and you're a robot. You're a machine. That's machinist. Scott, I'm so stupid. Stupid. Foolish, gullible, doltish, dumbbell, lame brain. Number five would be excellent at cinema sins. Head up! We've got it! Move, move, move! We interrupt short circuit to bring you this scene from Police Academy 5. When you're dead, you're dead. That's just the way it is. Dead is forever. That turned dark real quick. <sighs> Son of a bitch, the prototypes do have built-in stabby tools. Okay, if Johnny Five and Robocop got into a fight, who would win? Discuss. Girly, girly, come quick, girly, danger. What planet is this guy from? That's racist. Oh, Bull Dyke, you cannot hold your water with that story. That's sexist. <laughs> so the prototypes can be shut down with a giant red on-off button? That would have been useful to know before dispatching Scroder's trigger-happy militia and engaging in all-out warfare at this public marina. Also, this cheap tug at the heartstrings. You can load it on the truck now. What the hell is the matter with you, you four-eyed idiot? You only call someone that if they're wearing glasses. Failed four-eyed insult gets four sins. Self-aware robot slowly brings itself back to life after being terminated, cliche. Bingo. Johnny Five is a dick to senior citizens. Johnny is a sentient escaped military death machine driving a stolen van and currently swerving drunkenly toward you in your lane. Look out! That being said, I don't care what anyone says, I love this song. I got three of them. Three dandy little scroters, and I want them to be adults, not barbecues. Three dandy little scroters was the name of my high school grunge band. Did you know that there's a $25,000 reward for anyone that turns it in? Conveniently timed TV news broadcast cliche. Bad boy character says something menacing as he takes a billiard shot cliche. For $25,000, I'm damn well gonna know where it is, too. Stephanie. Johnny Five is a creepy perv. Attractive. Nice software. I'll do the jokes if you don't mind. Okay, software, something RAM, something something hard drive. Damn it, I got nothing. Go on, get out of here. Go on. Mm, solitude, isolation, alone. Johnny Five is a manipulative bastard. A can of soup, a meal in itself. Johnny Five is a shameless corporate shill. Damn you, movie, for putting this disco dancing sequence in here. I don't care if the director also did Saturday Night Fever. Forcing me to listen to the Bee Gees is unforgivable. One sin for every single second of this waking nightmare. How, robot? Me friend. Hmm? No, talk computer, not Apache. That's racist. And as for you, you little pain in the neck, you better not come crawling back to me because now it's over. Good! You hear that, ladies? He's single now. now. All roads are blocked. Her only chance is a back road into the hills. We'll concentrate our search there. Scroder and his gun-toting lackeys are employed by Nova and are a private security force, so I don't see how they could legally set up roadblocks without getting the real authorities involved. Perhaps the movie forced this back road into the hills contrivance just so they could shoot this next scene at Crown Point. Yeah, it's scenic, but it's still a sin. Cynic? Cynic? Oh, just hunky-dory, thanks. I just swore out some warrants for your arrest. Okay, but you're not a judge, so I'm calling bullshit. Hi. 
Inclusion of a cheesy power ballad in the scene implies there is some sort of romantic chemistry here, but both characters just want something from the other at this point, so I don't buy it. Number five loaded. Oh, Engage no. and capture. Do not destroy. <laughs> Number one says do not destroy literally as it's firing its death beam. It's malfunctioning and it needs to be repaired. Life is not a malfunction. Roll taglines. This damn song is still playing. Stay where you are. Number $11 million AI prototype with laser guided optics is brought down by a mudsling to the face. Hey, laser lips! Your mama was a snowblower! That's definitely racist. Absolutely. You have yeah, my word. This damn song is still playing! Scrooter! Terrific job, Crosby. Thanks for the help. No, I had nothing you to do with You bastard! No, you're not I'm not You're a liar! Stephanie immediately believes this douchebag over Crosby. As far as I'm concerned, the real traitor here is this chick. When they first got here, she was all... Hi, how you doing? Fine, it's good to see you. But Scroder and Umbrella Boy were already here, the latter posing as staff. So this chick was either paid off or strong-armed by Nova. Either way, Cinnable. <laughs> Johnny Five is a dick to independent local businesses. Look out everyone, this guy brought a whistle. These rednecks don't even think twice before opening fire in public. Johnny Five is still a dick to independent local businesses. I'm telling you right now, this little fart of a robot is beginning to give me the red ass. Red ass. I should have known every time I think a guy's gonna be okay, turns out to be a robot. Sure, we're all alike, all of them. That's sexist. One of them comes near you, you blast him. Just Burn his butt with your laser. Johnny Five is not your personal army. Oh my goodness, I am sporting a tremendous Woody right now. TMI, dude. Our hands came really close to touching, and she said I had really nice eyes. What the hell movie am I even watching now? Oh my god, are all geniuses as stupid as you? Was that a neg? I brought you some soup. It's getting cold. As indicated by the rising steam. Holy shit. No shit. Where's C shit? PG-rated film drops three shit bombs in a row, proving that 80s kids were tough and not phased by profanity. Also, I just realized that this film has no kids in it whatsoever, and what a goddamn blessing that is. <laughs> what an asshole. There's a priest, a minister, and a rabbi. They're out playing golf. Let me stop you right there. That's racist. It's really true. <laughs> Spontaneous emotional response! Film's crucial turning point happens only because Johnny Five laughs at Crosby's dumbass racist joke. Premature celebration cliche. Ooh, right on the sensor. Johnny Five pops a robo boner out of his brain. Completely under my control. Another lie. I'm lying to them, not to you. It's still lying. Do you want to get out of this alive or not? God damn it. I am sick and tired of listening to this technical bullshit. Because it's giving him the red ass. Not sure whether to send Johnny somehow building a fully functional remote operated replica in just a couple minutes, or that Nova keeps enough spare parts in every van to allow this. Why not both? Don't worry, it's a Disney death. Years of research are down the tube and you're happy as a pig and slop. What's down the tube? You still have at least four more prototypes. I'm sorry you lost your job. But I'm really glad you quit Nova. So the Nova van you're driving right now is stolen? Hi, honey, I'm home. Number five? This Hollywood ending bullshit. He made a duplicate of himself from all these spare parts. Thanks for explaining it. I was so confused. No, I have responsibilities here. What about my animal? Come on, Stephanie. World's first sentient robot celebrates life by being a dick to the animal kingdom. The hell is this corporate crap? Closing credits blooper reel. Come and follow. I'm not following you anywhere. The film's co-stars didn't even follow you to the sequel. Nova Robotics, Damon Washington, you're a robot? The CPU is enrolled in that processor, a learning computer. You're a robot, you're a machine. The Skynet presets the switch to read only when we are sent out alone. <laughs> I have detailed files on human anatomy. You sure don't talk like a machine. You are illegally parked on private property. 
Thank you.